A proper human diet is your birthright. And I choose that word very carefully. That word is loaded with meaning. Your birthright. You have, you have several birthrights. Okay? One of them is that you have a right to a proper human diet. As do your children. As do your grandchildren. And all your progeny for all time. Every child that's being fed a shitty school lunch has a birthright to a proper human diet and they are being abused to the degree that that is being denied them. Every hospital patient, every nursing home resident has a right to a proper human diet and they are being abused to the degree that that is not provided for them. When you start to think about a proper human diet in that respect, kind of pisses me off a little bit. What about you? Yeah. A proper human diet optimizes your health. It optimizes your longevity. It minimizes inflammation. Minimizes chronic disease. Minimizes disability. You are, everybody in this room, except for the couple of canines I saw, <laughs> are Homo sapiens sapien. You are a discrete, known species of mammal. You are a, pl you are a placental mammal. We've been this species for somewhere between 250 and 350,000 years. Paleoanthropology keeps finding evidence. Oh gosh, we're a little older than we thought we were. They keep pushing it back. We have the same genetics, the same DNA as we had 300,000 years ago. I could take you and take off your makeup and get you, roll you in the, the dirt and get you good and dirty and put you in a time machine and send you back in time 300,000 years to your great-great-grandmother to the 85th power and she would accept you into the tribe. I could take your great-great-grandmother to the 50th power and give her a good bath and manicure and a pedicure and send her to the, to the hairdresser and put some makeup on her and some modern clothes and no, nobody in this room could pick her out and say, What's, what's that? That's how old you are. So when I say birthright, I'm talking about a long damn time ago. We figured out what a proper human diet was. And you have not changed genetically in that time. You are the same placental mammal that your gra grandmother was that long ago. There's ample anthropological evidence that as we evolved as a species, our brains got bigger and bigger and bigger. But it stopped. And they actually started getting smaller. Do you know when that was? How long ago was that? Years ago. About 10 or 12,000 years ago. And there was something big that happened about 12, 13,000 years ago. We're not sure. Some could, worldwide catastrophe, and it wiped out all the megafauna, the huge animals, the fatty beasts that weighed over 100 kilograms. And all these things happened to us after that. People think that the agricultural revolution was a scientific breakthrough. That it was a, it was a sign of progress. It was actually us trying to figure out how not to starve to death. After this cataclysmic event happened. We know that our hindgut, we used to be hindgut fermenters, just like our least distant relatives. That, that still live in the, in the trees and on the ground. They have a huge hindgut and they have to eat for hours a day, chew up the fiber and then let the bacteria digest it. And in many cases, they have to poop that out and then eat it again to, to get the products of what the bacteria did in their cecum. Our cecum has shrunk a lot. Now we have a little appendix that most surgeons think are just a Mercedes payment but they're actually very important to your overall health and you need to keep that if at all possible. 
our, our IQ was rising steadily and many would argue that it's not doing that anymore. Is it because we're slowly poisoning our brain and body? Yes. 12,000 years ago, the, look up, if you're interested in this, look up the Younger Dryas. Okay, D-R-Y-A-S. And you will quickly be have, have the pleasure of going down a rabbit hole that you perhaps have never heard of before. And it will make the agricultural revolution much more interesting. And you'll have many, many questions about that. So proper, then diet. Diet's a way of eating. A lot of people hate the word diet because it means you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to restrict. But I don't use diet in that context. I use it in the context of way of eating. That, that, it also means that. The reason we eat is for nutrition. Now, some of us may eat for pleasure. Some of us may eat because of a mental health problem that we need to deal with, a social problem, a family problem, boredom, right? But the reason that we eat as a species is for nutrition. So obviously our ancestors learned thousands of years ago not to eat things that cause inflammation. And indeed there are many plants that will kill you dead within minutes of ingesting them. I agree with some of the, the panelists and, and uh, well, I agree with all of them about a lot of things, uh, but there are degrees of poison, right? And so if, if Kellogg's or Post or General Mills, if they were producing literal fast acting poison and putting it on your supermarket shelf, they wouldn't get away with that for long, right? We would all have our pitchforks and our attorneys and they, they would cease to exist. But what if they, we're producing and marketing a slow poison that took 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to really show up as an effect. Would, would there be many attorneys interested in that case? Can't really prove anything. Lifestyle is obviously important. You want to get out in the sun every morning, preferably barefoot. I don't care if it's five degrees, you're not going to die or lose a toe. Okay, <laughs> shut up. Take your shirt off, take your sunglasses off, take your shoes off, and go out and mimic the behavior of your great-grandmother. She didn't do it out of choice. She did it because that was, it was that or jump off the bluff, right? But we have to mimic the diet. We have to mimic the lifestyle to a certain degree in order for this ancient DNA to be optimized. That's not optional, and to the degree that you ignore that, that will be the degree to which your health suffers. Minimize bad stress. Obviously, your grandmother had stressful times, right? She was either chasing something, trying to eat it, or she was running from something, trying not to be it. <laughs> but for the vast majority of the time, anthropologists think we probably just, we probably laid around, and we talked, and we gossiped. You know, humans love to gossip, and that's not new. Okay, that's actually an ancestrally preserved behavior because that's how you know your tribe intimately. You know everything about everybody. And some of us on social media, you feel that tribal thing coming back where everybody wants to talk about you and everybody's got an opinion, whether they've ever met your ass or not. They got an opinion and that's, that's human nature. Don't let that bother you. That's just part of what we are as a species. Fasting is part of a proper human diet. Whether it's a, a, a daily intermittent fast, or it's a two-day fast once a week, or a three-day fast every two weeks, or even a seven-day fast once every few months. And I'm not advocating that. I'm just telling you that is part of a proper human diet. There's no doubt about that. Now, your grandmother didn't do that by choice. She did that because your grandfather didn't kill nothing. <laughs> so she fasted. They would have called it starving. But over all these generations, our body actually use, learned to use that as a downtime to repair and replace. And you can mimic that behavior once again by choosing to fast. Because now in our life, it's always autumn, right? There's always everything at the grocery store. But you have to make the conscious choice and, the, and have the knowledge to know, oh, that's not eating every five minutes. That's not in any way ancestrally appropriate. Prioritize your sleep. Because, you know, your grandmother, when it got dark, 
there was there was two things to do. <laughs> Maybe three, depending on your grandmother, but two things to do. I don't know what's going on with my slides. So let me tell you the principles of a proper human diet. I'm not sure if I may have sent the, yeah, I totally sent the wrong presentation. Okay, forget all that. Let's just talk. <laughs> <coughs> so a proper human diet is nutrient dense. It has to be because you're eating for nutrition. You need amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals. Now there are powers that be out there who are trying to convince you that fiber is an essential nutrient. Many doctors, many dietitians, many authoritative bodies. Is there any definitive research showing that fiber is essential in the human diet? Is there one study? Is there a single study of my nutritionist buddies saying, hell no? Okay, but it's very popular to talk about that right now. It's very, very in, in fashion to talk about fiber. And indeed, many of you guys here are like, I really feel like I probably need some fiber. Because, I mean, they, on CNN last night, they said, <laughs> right? There is not a single evidence-based study that shows causality, that fiber does anything good. And indeed, many of you guys, after you remove the fiber, you have the evidence from your N equals 1 study that fiber was doing lots of not good things in your body. Raise your hand if you remove the fiber completely and your health actually improved. Look around everybody. If you're new to this and you're like, that can't be healthy. Are all these people stupid? Are they crazy? They live with themselves. They know what happened back when they were eating fiber and then when they removed it. Now, should everybody remove all fiber? I don't know. There's this thing called a normal distribution curve in human physiology, and it looks like this, okay? Some people would call that the bell curve in the past. Let's avoid that because it's a little triggering to some people. It's a normal distribution curve. Every single facet of human physiology is on a, is on a normal distribution curve, okay? So if we're talking, we can talk about any nutrient. You can talk about any body function. There's going to be a normal distribution curve in human beings. So fiber, okay. There's a small subset of people that if they touch fiber, their health is immediately going to suffer. It's going to be like a fast poison almost. Perhaps not deadly, but they're going to have immediate negative feedback. In the, in the big fat middle of the normal distribution curve, the majority of people, if they eat a little fiber, it's probably not a big deal. Their body can handle it. But if they eat too much, it's going to cause some symptoms. And then there's a, a, over here in this tail, not many people, but they can live on fiber. And it doesn't seem to bother them whatsoever for many, many years. So you can apply that concept to every single nutrient, every single blood test, every single thing about your, your physiology, your biochemistry, your health, and your life, and human beings fall on that curve. That's just biology. So nutrient dense. So if you're eating something for pleasure, just call it what it is. I'm eating this. This is shit. Now I know it is. <laughs> but I'm going to eat it because I love it, and it's my birthday, and don't give me that look. <laughs> but I want it to always be a conscious choice okay alcohol is another big one alcohol is not ancestrally appropriate zero none alcohol is poison there's ample evidence there is no argument you cannot argue that when you know the the, the, the metabolic pathway of what happens to alcohol you're like yeah that's poison sure yeah so you want to minimize all fast acting and slow acting poisons alcohol is one of them i love an occasional bourbon but i don't trick myself into thinking it's heart healthy okay and you shouldn't do that either you shouldn't fall for that kind of bullshit because that's exactly what it is that red wine with dinner that you remember a few years back remember that why well, wonder why they stopped talking about that it's very popular for a minute I wonder if that same thing will happen to fiber as the years go by. Maybe, maybe. A, a proper human diet is ancestrally appropriate, which means that your grandmother ate that. She would, if you went back in time with a ribeye 
and some eggs, and even some broccoli, even though broccoli didn't exist then. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. She'd be like, yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. We'll eat that. But if you took back anything made by Kraft Heinz or Mondelez, she'd be suspicious of that, right? And it, she would eat a little bite of that, and then she would wait. Or if, if she were the leader of the clan, <laughs> she'd be like, hey, Bubba, come here. Here, eat some of that. Don't make me whoop your ass. Eat this. And then she would watch Bubba for a day or two. That's how we learned of all the thousands of plants. You can eat these, but don't touch these. You can eat these, but you must cook them. You must, ro you must roast them. You must soak them. You must cook them, pour off the water, cook them again. Then you can eat them. Now, how many people's grandmother or great-grandmother, when you go over to her house, there'd always be, be vegetables, but they would literally be green mush. She didn't do that because she was a bad cook. She did that because she was taught, you don't, you don't eat raw vegetables. You cook them. And, and you, if you don't want to have any symptoms, you cook, cook them to death. And that's what she did, because that's how she was taught. Your grandmother soaked beans for days and cooked them at least for one full day before she would feed them to her family. That's how she was taught. That kind of knowledge is gone now. You see vegans eating raw beans. And they wonder why their teeth are falling out. They wonder why their gut is turning literally inside out. A proper human diet, by definition, is uninflammatory. That's why your grandmother would test that with, with Bubba. Or she would cook, cook that shit for days before she ever put it in her mouth. Because you don't want to cause inflammation in your body. Inflammation from an improper diet can show up in your skin, in your joints, Definitely in your gut, but also in your brain function. Me, and my good friend Chris Palmer just released a book called Brain Energy. Who's read that book? When I say read, I also mean listen to for my ADHD friends, right? But if you haven't, if you have anybody with, with, with brain trauma, with mental health issues, you need, to, you need to read that book or buy them a copy. So you don't want to inflame any part of your body. That's not good to inflame it with your diet. And there are even plant-based people now who are trying to talk about the hormesis, the hormetic effect of, of the sulforaphane in broccoli. It's like, you understand you're saying that it causes inflammation. That's what you're saying. And hormetic stress in some situations, working out hard, running hard, having sex hard, Cold plunges, getting out in the cold, getting out in the hot and sweating profusely. Those things are horm hormetic and they're good for you. But I would opine that you don't need to be eating things that cause gut inflammation. That's a bad plan. Do you know how many generations it takes to change your family tradition? Because so many of us come from a family where the plate was full of, full of veggies, and when I buy veggies, I mean potatoes and beans, right? And corn, cornbread, that's a veggie. Bread, that's a veggie. <clears throat> and then dessert was really not optional. Because in the South where I grew up, Granny Berry expected me to clean my plate and maybe clean a second plate and then have dessert. Because that was kind of a sign that you were a, you were a big boy. You were a man, if you could, <laughs> right? And so when we would go to a buffet or picnic, it was called a plate bender. Because you would put so much food on your plate, you'd have to get two plates or your plate would bend in, right? That was considered kind of a mark of manhood, that you ate that much food. And if it had been proper human diet food, that wouldn't be a big deal. You could eat your stuff. But I know a lot of you guys have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and you want to change your family heritage. Maybe you, maybe you have, a, you're, you're from a certain ethnic background that carbohydrates, that basically food in that language means carbohydrates. You can change that. That is not, it feels to you because you are the grandchild of a grandmother who cooked that way. That feels set in stone in your heart, doesn't it? 
I can't, I, 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 what, what can I do? Or you're, you're in a blended family or a broken family and you're like, how can I reach across the aisle, so to speak? Because I've got kids or grandkids or great-grandkids great in that situation and maybe the head of that household doesn't really give a damn about my opinion. If you're in that situation, you don't have to raise your hand. But I know it exists. But what I would advise you to do is every opportunity you can, you feed your family a proper human diet. Because every time you do that, every meal, you're changing your family tradition. You're creating a new family tradition. And you never know when a child or a niece or a nephew will be really impressed and really go, huh. And then they'll carry on your legacy. And then what you've actually done in your family is you've created a new tradition. And as we all know, our, our family traditions, they're hard to break, aren't they? But they are breakable. It takes two generations to create a new family tradition. And so if you're stuck in that, don't think you're powerless. You're not. Because you're going to start to, to, to create a new family tradition for your offspring, for your progeny, for the people that you love most in this world. You have the power to do that. And you can do it blatantly by cooking a dish and taking it, by saying, yeah, I don't eat that. It causes me to have gut inflammation because there's probably somebody else at the table who will say, it does that to me too. And then you say, well, maybe that means we just shouldn't eat that shit. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we should stop. Yeah, I know grandmama's going to say something, but maybe we should not eat that. Some of you guys in certain family situations are going to have to use ninja level tactics. <laughs> right? You may, you may cook something and not tell anybody, this is proper human diet. You may just take it and it's delicious and they eat it all. You just changed your family tradition when you did that. Right? Because they're not going to remember what you preach about. They're going to remember what, what you all sat down and ate together. That is human nature. That is, you cannot fight that. When you grow up in a, in a family and you're eating this certain food, it becomes part of your heart. You can make a proper human diet part of the heart of future generations. That, that food can make them feel like home. Real human food can make them feel love. And I would opine it can make them feel love more strongly than the ultimate plant toxin, which is sugar and starch. There are many plant toxins, but that's the ultimate one for the vast majority of people. How powerful would that be if you could change your family's trajectory? Because all of us are like, no, being big bone runs in my family. Type 2 diabetes runs in my family. Hypertension, we all got it. What if it's just the food tradition that's causing that? What if you could literally say, yeah, no, obesity doesn't run in our family. What ran in our fa family was a shitty diet, but we're slowly fixing that for the entire family. You guys all have the power to do that. A proper human diet is not scalable. And that's a big deal because all the billion dollar corporations, they want a product that they can basically get the, the ingredients for free. Grains, sugar, vegetable seed oil. Those are the most subsidized food-like products on the planet. They can make anything from a pizza crust to a bagel to a jelly donut to a cake, literally anything. <clears throat> Call it anything, put anything on the front of the package, put it in a plastic wrapper, put it on the shelf, and it'll sit there for two years. So they got two years to make that 1,000% markup that it cost them to make it. You can't do that with proper human diet food. Much to the chagrin and consternation of our friends on the other side of the bleachers here who are trying to convince you that their product is necessary. Okay? And the... Uh, organizers of this event may not appreciate this, but I don't really give a damn. 90% of the shit on the other side of these bleachers is complete, utter bullshit. If you need red light therapy, guess where the, the, the best red light therapy in the universe? 
Oh wait, the sun has full spectrum infrared? But there's no monthly fee with that. How? Gotcha. Uh, cold, cold therapy. I think that's probably advantageous to us. Do you know how you can get that? There's 50 ways you can get that for free, right? Now, sauna, sauna is a big deal, right? You know what I, you know what, what a redneck sauna is? You get in your shorts, you get in your flip-flops. I don't actually own any. Nisha would shoot me if I brought home a pair of flip -flops. And you go out and you get in your black truck in the middle of summer. And you sit in, the, you sit in there for about three minutes. And I can do that for free every day. Okay? Is snacking a part of a proper human diet? Absolutely not. We are designed to eat discreet meals when we find appropriate food. And then we're to go about our business. We're basically to go outside and play. Or fight. Or gossip. That's what we do. That's what we're supposed to do. Eat to your full. Go play. Just like your grandmother may have told you. Don't come back in this house until dark or dinner. Right? Right? She wasn't doing that to be mean. She wasn't doing that because she hated you. She was doing that because she could hear the echo of the past. Telling her, that's how you raise good, healthy humans. Get your ass out of here. Don't, uh, don't let me catch you in this kitchen. Right? But now we feel like if a kid's going to play soccer for 30 minutes, they need some little fr fruit bars and some little... Uh, I mean, they, they may just die. From 30 minutes of running around kicking a ball, they may just drop dead at any minute. We better, right? Well, guess what? Big food loves it when you believe that stupid shit. And our friends on the other side of the bleachers, they love it when you believe that kind of stuff because that makes a, a space for their product. Makes a space in your life. Makes a space in your wallet. That might be just what they're looking for. Is, is some dedicated money from your wallet every week, every day, every month. Maybe that's what they're looking for. And I think many of the things on the other side of the bleachers are less bad than what you're going to get from the center of the grocery store. I think it's less bad. Yes, totally agree. But does that make it good? Or does that just make it less bad? Just think about that. I'm not trying to persuade you to do or not do anything. I just want you to think. We have to think in our modern society. Your grandmother didn't have to think. It was just either it was there and she ate it or it wasn't there and she fasted. That was easy, but probably hard also, right? But we don't, we, we don't have that luxury because we currently have too much luxury. It's always autumn. There's always food in the fridge and in the pantry. There's always pseudo food-like products in the pantry, in the fridge, unless you've taken charge of your kitchen. There's always somebody coming in the kitchen looking for a snack unless you've put down your foot like grandmama did and said, don't let me catch your ass in this kitchen. I have cleaned up, you do not come in here or I will get the spatula. <laughs> she was doing that because she loved you, not because you got on her nerves, which you probably did. A proper human diet, if followed by enough people, is going to break the back of the big food corporations. A proper human diet, if followed by enough people, is going to break the bastardly back of big pharma. I don't have the power to do that. But you know what? All of us together, teaching, living, showing, leading by example, not proselytizing and preaching on the corner like that crazy guy with the sign. How many converts do you think that guy really gets? <laughs> leading by quiet example. Always offering. Always being ready to answer a question. Always being ready to share a video. Always being ready 
but not being pushy. But when you first learn the power of a proper human diet, it kind of makes you want to stand on the corner. I know it does. That's why I have a YouTube channel. That's me on the corner with a sign. Right? <laughs> but that's, you don't have to be that way. If they see the transformation in your health, not just your physical health, but if they see the difference in your mental health, Humans are pattern recognition experts. The dumbest human you know can still see a pattern. Every time I touch this, it burns my finger. Okay, you got that. Now, so don't touch that shit. Don't do that anymore. We are great at that. And so as they see the repetitive pattern, she's eating this way, she's healthier. Look at her. She used to never smile. Now she smiles all the time. She used to have to buy two airplane seats or that extension belt. And now she don't do that anymore. She looks like a completely different person. She acts like a completely different person. And I'm with her every day. I know she's not putting on. I know she's not trying to trick me. Humans are great at seeing that. You got to be great at showing that. You got to be great at, at gently, quietly, diplomatically sharing the benefits of a proper human diet. And we can do those two things because my ultimate goal is to improve the health of the whole world. But I know for me to succeed in that, we're going to have to put some billion dollar corporations into chapter 13 bankruptcy. And I'm happy to do that with you because I can't do it alone. I need your help. I need you being sitting on ready with the share button. And when somebody asks, don't you be sharing that shit 14 times to somebody who's like, look, I've told you I'm going to block you if, you if you tell me about keto one more time. I'm going to block you. I can't help it. That's, they're not ready. You've got to wait. You've got to have some, you got to take your daily dose of vitamin P. Everybody's writing that down like, oh, I hadn't heard of that one. I better buy some of that. Better go to Amazon right now. Vitamin P. No, you've got to be patient. If you got a gray hair or two, that means you're supposed to have wisdom. You're supposed to have patience. It's built in. Use it. Wait till somebody's ready, and then you're right there and you're happy to share. But that's the way we're going to reach our goal of improving the health of the entire world. That's the way we're going to reach our goal of screwing the big food corporations that have been screwing us for decades. We're going to flip that shit. Then after Big Foods made their profit, Big Pharma's more than happy to step in and help you with your medical problems. And we're gonna flip the script on that shit too. And they're gonna be looking for a job when we get finished. Are you guys with me on this? Can we do this? Is this possible? Yes. Is it worth doing? Yes. Are you going to give up? No. I can't, I can't thank you guys uh, as, as deeply as I should. I don't have the words. How many people are part of our, our tribe? Yes. Stand up. Stand up if you're in the tribe. Hey, give these guys a round. They're always on the case. Thank you so much for, for tolerating me today, and thanks for doing what you do to make the world a healthier place. I appreciate it so much. I, I, I've got to give a plug for the new book that I wrote with Zane Griggs called Kicking Ass After 50. And if you're over 50 and you think, that's an oxymoron, you can't. I can't kick ass because I'm up in the recliner. No, you can and you should. And please buy a copy of that book because I think it could change your life or the life of somebody you love. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.